Scythe, you are the leader of one of five factions looking to take control of Eastern Europa in a future that seems written by an 80s heavy metal band. You're going to do this by essentially moving workers, gaining resources, buying upgrades, putting out mechs, getting into combat, and amazingly, as many pieces as there are in this game, as complex as it might seem, uh, it's actually done in a really simple manner, uh, the kind of game that you can learn in just a couple of minutes, to be honest. One round, and you'll know exactly what you're doing in the scythe. So in scythe, you play one of these faction leaders, uh, and you'll be randomly given one of these bottom cards, so that play is always going to be changing a little bit uh, each time that you get into the game. So on your turn, you're just going to take your little marker and you're going to place it on one of the sections on the board. So you can pay a coin uh, to trade and that will give you any two resources that you want. Or you can pay a coin uh, to trade and get popularity. Popularity is going to be important at the end of the game. Uh, or you could, you know, bolster your army, basically improve your uh, combat proficiency so that in combat you'll have more uh, prowess to spend uh, that will do more damage to an enemy combatant or you can get combat cards, which you'll be able to spend in combat as well to increase your power. Uh, you can also move, so you can just move units based on however many units you have available to, uh, to move. And then uh, lastly, uh, you could produce. So uh, however many workers you have on the different spaces based on the type of space that they are, and you can see right there what type of space, uh, what it will produce on each space, uh, you'll produce those items. So whether it's one of the four resources or producing people. So if you had three of your workers on a space that had uh, this worker symbol here and you went and produced, well, boom, 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 they would uh, get a lot of banging done and produce three more of them, all right? So then you'd just be full of workers, uh, workers everywhere. Now, why are the resources important? Because the resources are gonna be used to do and pay for these bottom actions, uh, which are that you can upgrade. So that's taking one of these little cubes, and moving it down below so that you gain uh, extra benefits from the top row of the actions and so that it costs less to do one of the bottom row actions. Uh, you can also build, so you'll see that you have uh, four different uh, buildings here that you can put out on the board. You can recruit, um, which will earn you a persistent benefit whenever somebody else uses one of these uh, bottom row actions uh, or you can deploy a mech and each of the mechs has a hidden power beneath them and that power once you uh, put the mech into play is available to all of your units uh, and each of these different factions has different powers under their mechs so playing each faction will play differently no matter what. Now the point of the game is to earn six stars and the great thing about this is that you're going to earn that by doing all these things that are on the board so if you Take a, you earn a star basically by getting all of your buildings out on the board. That's going to earn you a star. If you recruit or enlist all of your guys, that's going to be another star. Deploy all four of your mechs, again, that's another star. Uh, win in combat, that will get you a star. Complete your secret objectives, etc. So lots of different ways to earn stars. As soon as somebody places their sixth star, the game ends instantly. And it really is just a battle of who is going to earn uh, the most gold, right? That's what you want. Just to have the most gold at the end of the day. The catch is that you want to go ahead and have a uh, high popularity because you'll be scored, everybody will be scored in how many stars they've earned, uh, how many territories they've gained, and uh, for every two resources that they have. But you earn more if you're in higher tiers of popularity. That's a basic overview. There are, there are some other little tricks in here that I haven't talked about too much. Like uh, you can actually send your hero out to go and have encounters and you get to see these really cool pieces of art and make a choice. And it tells a little bit of a story between the art and the choices of kind of what type of leader that you are. Uh, and there's a factory that will give you extra benefits uh, throughout the game if you happen to control it. Uh, but really that's the gist of it. You're just moving workers, moving out your mechs, uh, engaging occasionally in combat, uh, and that's that's really it. I think Scythe is an amazing Forex game. Forex meaning to explore, exploit, which is to gather resources, uh, to expand, so grow your empire, and then of course to exterminate. Though I have to say I've won three games in a row, and I've actually only had combat one time to win, make those all those victories, and. That combat was actually just because I was kind of curious what combat would be like, not because I needed it to win. What I really enjoy about Scythe is that as you play through a game, you'll start to see that each player is kind of taking on the characteristics of an archetypal 
uh, country. So like a, a nation that you might recognize. So you may just, uh, like I do sometimes, uh, just deploy a bunch of mechs as early as possible and build up a big force in the front, not to do combat, but actually to be like uh, Russia and the Cold War, where you're just stockpiling as much crap as you can so that nobody will want to come near you, right? You're just too expensive for anybody to think about encroaching in your territory, not that you're actually going out there and uh, and being a, a sprawling empire. But then again, you could play it uh, like the Roman Empire, where you're actually just spreading out, doing as much combat as possible, taking as much territory, just spreading yourself thin, but also spreading yourself wide. And then one of actually my favorites, and one that I found really successful, depending on the situation, is actually playing as an isolist nation, where you know I stuck for a long time in the four squares uh, in my territory that I could, and I didn't actually explore or adventure out at all until very near the end of the game, and everybody left me alone, and I walloped them. Uh, so there's just a lot of different ways to to play, but also it kind of gives you this flavor of these different nations, and it feels like these different countries sort of. Kind of not always going to war, but uh, trying to sort of gain the 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 favor of the land, right? Because really, you want to get the most popularity and then become the richest. Uh, if you're not popular, you're not going to become the richest. You're not going to have a chance to win the game. So Scythe has a lot of pieces to it. Uh, it's expensive, um, but it's amazing. Uh, in fact, I think the more I play it, the more I settle in that to date, this is my favorite game of 2016. It's just... It's so simple and yet it's so deep and rich in its strategy and the way that the narrative unfolds uh, very organically, uh, it's really powerful. Uh, and I have to say that that I think that right now it's gonna be hard for anybody to uh, unseat Scythe as the best game of 2016, but I'm, I'm willing to find that game. So if you've been on the fence about this one, uh, I say dive in.